Welcome, welcome back. It is I, Day 9, joined by the one and only, please say your name. Husky. Husky, H to the Husky, Frusky Nusky. He is here joining me as we cast the second series of the PAX Liquid Show Match series. That is right, we are taking four of the best of the best in Team Liquid, despite the fact that pretty much all of them are the best of the best. But we have Tyler versus Jinro coming up right now. The winner of this series... We'll face the winner of Hey Pro versus TLO. Without spoiling the results of that series, definitely go check it out. So we do have Jinro spawning in the south spot as the yellow Terran. And at the left, we have Liquid Tyler as the blue Protoss. This is going to be pretty fun. It is going to be a TVP. The last series was mostly a TVZ, as Little One was spawning as uh, Zerg quite a bit in that game. Bar as Terran, rather, excuse me. But um, yeah, I really, really am excited to see Tyler play. I'm always excited to see him play, simply because he's one of the players who I've, I've admired for a long time, because uh -huh, he will uh -huh. not play for a long time and then come back and crush everyone, yeah. and then kind of go back to this whole real-life thing that he has going on. Um, but Jinro is also no small feat to defeat. I would not be surprised if he ends up winning this, just because He's so powerful and such a strong player lately. Mm -hmm. As many of you know, Jinro has hit the top four of the GSL twice in a row. An yeah, almost yeah. impossible feat. Yeah, I know. People were always asking these questions to me, like, Day 9, who do you think is going to win the GSL? And it was in these podcasts, like State of the Game, and people would be saying things like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, MC's been practicing a lot. I'm really impressed with him. And I was like, Jinro, who who <laughs> picks anyone but Jinro? Do, do you realize you're a member of the foreigner community? Jinro is going to win the whole Star League. And I was very nearly right twice in a row, but that's fine. I'm going to keep cheering for him. Yeah, but and as you should, uh, I do want to mention really quick, the GSL, a lot of people don't actually know about the GSL, and they should. It is the tournament to win, so for him to get top four twice, that is insane. That definitely puts him in a top tier of play, and uh, I think people just need to quite realize how good of a player he actually is to do that. Absolutely. There's Liquid Tyler now in the left position on Metalopolis. You know what's so funny, Husky? We haven't, you know talked about the game yet so maybe we should go ahead and do that <laughs> yeah that's one of my biggest faults people hate me for that well you know what haters gonna hate and we're gonna talk and enjoy ourselves we see tyler getting a, a zealot right away uh, as well as his cybernetics core coming up there's the assimilator uh the second one going down as well uh, i personally do really like building a zealot while my cyber core is going down it allows me to have two military units the stalker and zealot out in succession yep you see the cybernetics core finishes at the exact same time as the stalker jinro has really revealed too much just getting one marine and immediately getting the concussive shell and marauder started so i would fully anticipate a fast expand from jinro router kind of sounds like a uh, metal slug talk going on, but he is actually chrono boosting <laughs> out the stalker. He will use this to to take out the scouting SCV there, as the zealot is way too slow, and a player like Jinro is not going to let his SCV die to a zealot. Uh, can't really mm -hmm. do much about the stalker there, so he did clean it out, and this is where it's going to be up to Tyler. Does he want to throw down his tech? Does he want to get his second gateway? And since he has killed that scouting worker, uh, the pro right here, he is going to be right uh, positioning it to make something. There goes the Robo Bay, going that gateway into robotics, and probably going to get his his second gateway, which is usually pretty standard, mm -hmm. and there it goes down right now. This is what I call the safest opening in the book. You get a good amount of units out because you have two gateways, and you get a relatively fast observer, so you can check out exactly what your opponent's doing. The only danger is, are you going to respond to your opponent properly? If you ever do some sort of, eh, I'm kind of okay against everything style of build, you need a point where you skew hard to respond to what your opponent's doing. And there's the, oh my gosh, look at Tyler's timing as that Reaper pops up into the main. And Reaper does get taken out, and it sees the Robo Gateway opening. So really, uh, whoa, Tyler getting a third Gateway. I am kind of surprised by that. Yeah, that is a very early third gateway. Usually off one base, it's two gate, one robo. But for now, he is going to be chrono boosting out that observer. Very standard, especially on these close spawn locations. Uh -huh. That observer will easily scout the command center here, which is pretty early for Jinro. And I know the Reaper did get taken out. I do want to mention, though, that I really like Reaper openings for Terran on this map. I've seen it used mm -hmm. quite a bit, and you can use it to control the watchtowers. Usually you want to try and scout into the main and then use it for the watchtowers. Did get taken out by that stalker, though. That just shows you Tyler's timings are always just spot on. And oh, he yeah. does actually have four sentries in this army and he may potentially be moving out here 
Wow, and there's the Expo going down for Tyler. Looks like he managed to find a timing where he could actually squeeze out a third gateway. I don't know how much use he's going to be able to make out of that, but I think the clever twist that Tyler's going to do is he's going to put pressure on his opponent if Tyler does end up losing some units. If you think about it, that means he doesn't have to build extra pylons, so he can begin to make use of that third gateway again. Kind of, um, I don't know if that's optimal because I don't really like throwing away units, but you know what? What I said is still true, damn it. <laughs> now the uh, SCB over here is shivering his boots. I don't know if Tyler's going to be up. Yeah, there he goes. That SCB is going to die. And Tyler, yeah, I don't think he would have been able to do that much damage considering there was a bunker there plus the four Marauders and a handful of Marines at this location. So the very standard Marine Marauder. And there is the three racks and the timing of the expansion. Not too unorthodox as the, the little Marine Marauder ball, It will, if it does move out, it will be up to uh, Tyler's micro using those force fields. A lot of times in battles against Terran, it does come down to the force field. Um, mm -hmm. it, it can turn the tide of the battle one way or the other in extremes and so the expansion is up and running now the, the probes transferring down just a second or two early I guess most of them don't have minerals quite yet though so not too bad there but yeah his expansion timing just a little bit behind uh, Genro's which isn't too bad and I guess they're just going to both sit back and macro up Yep, here's a real big period of fear for Terran right when he is getting his add-ons at those two barracks. So he's going to definitely be doing a little bit of movement just to maybe give himself a touch of ground so that way he can begin getting those essential add-ons. But Tyler now is doing the very, very cool double forge upgrade style. And I really like this for two reasons. First of all, it gets you double ups very quickly. You can get to plus two, plus two extremely fast. But also... Most Protoss' biggest issue is that they don't really know how to spend the Chrono Boost on their Nexuses, but you know what? It's really obvious how to spend it when you have Forges upgrading. You just keep Chrono Boosting those, and you get your ultra-fast upgrades. The only thing Tyler will need to do in a moment is begin getting that Twilight Council. Yeah, the, the Twilight Council, of course, used to get the additional upgrades. Otherwise, getting double forge would be kind of silly, as having an armor upgrade is nice, but not super crucial uh, if you're not going to go ahead and continue those upgrades. But yeah, as you mentioned, using the Chrono Boost over and over, I've been keeping an eye on these forges, and those Chrono Boosts are going to be out around the 10-minute mark once those actually finish, so very early. And it'll be interesting to see how much of a, a difference it makes in the battle, because we all know that Marina Marauder is good against gateway units, but Tyler is actually opting for a lot of Zealots, and those Zealots don't take as much damage from those Marauders. So this mm -hmm. may be a pretty interesting way uh, in dealing with this. We do have two additional Raxes going down for Genro at his natural. That is pretty standard. And also the factory getting its add-on as well as the starport. And look at that timing by Tyler immediately getting the plus two, plus two upgrades. We're only just now hitting 10 minutes and 20 seconds and already getting plus two, plus two. One thing to note, those Zealots now have two armor. If you throw up a Guardian Shield, that means that the Marines only do two damage to Zealots, which which means it takes 50 shots from a marine to kill just the health on a zealot plus armor so so good on those zealots and i think yeah. that our good friend general is going to be a little bit disappointed to see that those uh forges are in fact almost done with 2-2 yeah, those Zealots kind of like they're in the Matrix. The Marine's not going to do that much. Of course, the Marauder's slow. You can still kite him around, but considering he's going to have that Twilight Council, could go for the Zealot Legs if he wants, as uh, he does have enough sentries to potentially cut that army in half, use the Zealots to slice them, and uh, again, the Chrono Boost still on top of these upgrades. I really like this style of play. I definitely expect to see it a lot more. The Factory has scouted the entire base, so he knows exactly what he's going against. Is he going to be too happy with what he sees? I mean, if we do look at the army size, Genro is just a little bit ahead in the unit counting station and uh, that, that's mostly though because he does have a couple additional workers so army strength is strong but I really like Tyler's unit composition I think it's very powerful against the marine marauder that Jinro is going absolutely but you know what this is sometimes the real danger with Tyler's incredible macro is that he can get a little bit behind on adding on more unit producing structures I know that sounds completely counterintuitive but a lot of times Tyler sticks a little bit low on the unit producing structure count and then after a deciding battle he cannot reproduce enough we do see that the Ghost Academy is down for Jinro there's the plus one attack and here's the drop heading to the back of the main he is going to drop will he be able to take out this pylon or even better one of the forges it looks like he's going directly for for the pylon he does take it out just inches from that uh being able to finish the research and oh no the armor upgrade is going to be able to get taken out and oh what a save oh, by tyler man. 
Yeah, Ugh. able to barely hold that off. I mean, he does have to remake those pylons, of course. He realizes maybe more than one pylon for my pivotal build order, uh, relying on mass upgrades. I should rely on that, although there is going to be an attack up here at the top center with another medevac. Force field is being used to trap those units. One lucky marauder escaping behind that statue. But yeah, I was kind of worried there because Tyler wasn't pulling his army back to begin with, but he was just pulling out those quick stalkers to prevent that drop. He was not able to kill that medevac, so Jinro, that drop is worth it. I mean, he got the pylon, slowed down the upgrade, but they have since now finished and have not quite begun the uh, the third upgrade quite yet. Mm -hmm. Does look like probe for Tyler heading up to the north position. Marine joins him and might be able to pick it off. No, not quite yet. Man, those two armors even helping out the probes in this game. And we see a very, very, uh, well, actually, I wouldn't call it the biggest push by Tyler. This actually looks kind of small for this phase in the game. But you know what? Given the 2-2 upgrades, Tyler's going to be very, very hard to kill with this infantry mix from Jinro. Now there is one bunker in position, an SCV or two here to repair it. Is he actually going to be able to break it and end it right here, or is he going to try and run around to the expansion on the right side? This battle will be very important because I think that Tyler's build order relies on attacking when his plus two plus two is in most effect. He does have three Colossus already, and I, I believe, yeah, there is only four Vikings on the field. That is not very many. And there's the attack pushing in right now, trying to do as much damage as he can, but we can see that there is just not that much that... Jinro can do. These Colossi are marching onto the field. Just four of those Vikings out right now. And that 2-2 two, two armor upgrade plus those Guardian Shields means almost no damage being dealt by this infantry force. And it looks like Tyler, with just a very simple timing push, breaks the front. And there's the good game. Tyler takes game one against Liquid Jinro. A very impressive first game. Jinro, the two-time semifinalist of the GSL, down 0-1. Let's head into game two.